Hi, welcome to the Health Warrior Series. Today is episode two. I'm Bridget Esslinger, the Functional Medicine and Integrative Nutrition Certified Health Coach. And today we're gonna be talking about inflammation, so you'll wanna stay tuned. Welcome back. So as I mentioned, today we're gonna to be talking about inflammation, but before we get into that, let's recap what we talked about in episode one. Episode one, we really talked about the human body and how amazing it is and all of the communication that happens within our body. So when we talk about inflammation and as we get into this, you're really gonna understand all the more reason why our bodies are so amazing. So let's dive in. Inflammation is truly a silent killer. We don't realize that. We don't realize when our bodies become inflamed or what inflammation really is. So today I'd like to take the time and explain to you, as I learned from my own journey, what inflammation does to our body. Um, it can truly wreak havoc. It is the root cause of most diseases. So here's some uh, good information for you. So inflammation, what is that? It truly is our body's natural defense mechanism. It is what happens when we get sick or our bodies are trying to protect us from an injury. It involves pain, heat, redness, swelling, and perhaps the potential loss of function to an affected area. Think about a broken bone or you know, you've had surgery and your body becomes inflamed because it's trying to help rejuvenate that area. That's how amazing our bodies are. They know when we are in jeopardy. They know when we are hurt, injured, sick, and it sends out a response team to help make us better. Inflammation is a response that helps protect the body against unfriendly bacteria and supports repair tissue, as I just mentioned. So when we talk about unfriendly bacteria, that is truly foreign invaders that, in, that enter our body. And that can be through a whole host of avenues. And I'll get into that here in just a second. Inflammation is necessary necessary and can become problematic if it goes on too long or the reaction is too strong. So we really need to pay attention to the cues our body gives us and acute inflammation. There's two types of inflammation. The first one is acute. It starts quickly. It generally disappears in several days. Acute inflammation often occurs because of an injury to the body, as I mentioned earlier, or maybe uh, to the skin where you have a sliver, um, you've smashed your finger, um, those types of things. Some signs and symptoms of acute inflammation, which are typically on the skin, as I mentioned, include the pain, the redness, the swelling, the in, uh, immobility, the heat, and you'll physically see this. You will see this occur on the skin or on your body somewhere where you have had an injury. Conditions or situations that can result from acute inflammation, like a sore throat. Um, I mentioned inflammation or a skin wound, infected area like an ingrown toenail. Uh, maybe it is bronchitis and it's just acute, right? It happens for a short period of time. It's not chronic, it doesn't stay with you forever. What about a sinus infection or physical trauma to the body, like you've been in a car wreck or you, know, you have fallen and injured yourself? Acute inflammation is occurring deep inside the body um, to an extent internal organ, maybe some of these signs won't be noticeable at all and it can happen for short periods of time. But again, we need to listen to the cues our body is giving us. So that's acute inflammation. Let's talk about chronic inflammation. This is one we're really gonna spend some time on. Chronic inflammation lasts for months or maybe even years without any signs or symptoms. Blood tests such as C-reactive protein or your sedimentation rate are great markers to pay attention to. For example, 
in my own journey, those were the markers that really tipped me off. Um, my markers were well into the hundreds, and so that is what sent me down my journey of finding out what was wrong with me. So when you go to the doctor and you're having symptoms, again, really ask them to do the blood work, find out what your inflammation markers are, and really try and address the problem. We're going to discuss that here in just a second. Signs and symptoms of chronic inflammation can include fatigue, maybe you have mouth sores, chest pain, joint pain, maybe you have abdominal pain, you have a continuous fever, maybe even a rash somewhere on the skin something like that that goes on for long periods of time or it's intermittent it comes and goes quite frequently again that's another sign another communication mechanism that your body is giving you that we need to pay attention to so many health conditions fall into the category of inflammatory diseases such as, such as inflammation of the joints that's arthritis inflammation of the large intestine that's colitis inflammation of your blood vessels right inflammation of the muscles inflammation of the skin so do you see the trend here where all of those end in the itis so if you get a diagnosis and anything ends in the itis category, that is truly a chronic inflammatory disease. And you really need to get to the root cause of that. Instead, so often we go to the doctor and we end up with this diagnosis. We end up with arthritis or colitis or ulcerative colitis, you know, dermatitis, something of that nature. And we are prescribed a drug that suppresses that response. So you may be prescribed a steroid, maybe some anti-inflammatories, maybe um, you know take Tylenol or Aleve, something of that nature. You, all you're doing is suppressing the response that your immune system is giving you. So I want to touch on that. This is going to be for another episode. I'm really going to dive into what our immune system is and what it does for us, but I'm going to give you just a, an insight here and a quick example. Our immune system is like the fire station. So inflammation is a fire in our body, and our immune system is so great to us that it senses that response. Remember I said it's like a foreign invader that has come into our body, and our body is trying to figure out what to do with that. So here you have a whole host of firemen sitting at the fire station and all the bells and whistles go off, they respond to wherever that fire is in our body. Maybe, if we get lucky, those firemen can put that fire out and they report back to the station, i.e. our immune system. Over time, when this happens repetitively, right, they, the fire alarm goes off, the firemen go out, they try and fight a fire. Maybe the fire gets out of control, maybe there's not enough firemen, but when they keep getting the same response for the same system over and over and over, eventually your immune system becomes too taxed and can't keep responding to that same alarm when there's other alarms going off. So again, I, I mentioned that, I just wanna share that with you as an analogy and I'm gonna dive into truly the immune system going forward in another episode. But when you go get a diagnosis of inflammation or an inflammatory disease and were prescribed steroids or some anti-inflammatory medication, all we're doing is suppressing that response. What we really need to be doing is getting to the root cause of the, of the symptom. What is causing my body to be so inflamed? Why am I experiencing arthritis or colitis or dermatitis? You know, bronchitis can go on for a long periods of time for some people, but anyway, one of those diagnoses should not be something we continually live with. We should get to the root cause of it. And honestly, a lot of times it is so very simple. Again, as in my own journey, I share with you my success stories. I was truly inflamed. I was inflamed for a long period of time. And all it took was for me to get to the root cause of my inflammation. And I'm going to share those with you. I'm going to share what can cause inflammation in our body and what you can do to reduce the inflammation in your so here we go what causes chronic inflammation you can see this right look at the picture that is oh my goodness somebody who's in a lot of pain whether it be headaches shoulder pain hip pain neck pain knee pain um, we all have pains right we can all say we've experienced pain in our life somewhere in our body 
So what causes that? Again, let's look at the root cause, not look at the symptom. I want to address the root cause. I don't want to suppress the symptom. So what causes it? Our standard American diet is very sad. We talked about this in episode one. Leaky gut, again, this is going to be another episode for in the future. I'm really going to dive into what leaky gut is. But back to the foreign invaders getting into your system, you know, and, and our body responding to that. I'm really going to dive in and explain to you what leaky gut is and how you can fix that. An over, overactive immune system. We talked about the firemen, right? The firemen go out, they try and respond to those fires. And again, that results in an underactive immune system when the response fails because they just can't go out and get rid of all of those harmful invaders. Excess weight. It's really unfortunate, but most of us truly are over our you know, ideal weight. And when we carry around that excess weight, our body struggles to know what to do with that. What am I supposed to do with this excess weight? It tries to have a response to that. So instead of being completely healthy, your body's trying to fight off excess weight. It's, it's absorbing and taking all its time and energy to address something it doesn't need to be addressing. Food allergies. We heard a lot of people who have like a, maybe a nut allergy, an egg allergy. So an allergy is something you have an immediate response to. Maybe it's not necessarily a food allergy. Maybe it is, you know, bee stings or you have some kind of a, a chemical reaction, something that you're highly allergic to. That response is instant. You know you're allergic to that item. So an intolerant, a food intolerant is, you know, maybe you just can't tolerate that food and it might be a day or two before you know that you don't like that food or your body has a hard time with that food. Food sensitivities could be, you know, three to six days later. So when you eat a food, you don't really attribute your pain six days from now or three days from now being the food you ate three days ago. So again, it's just a trend, something we really need to look at, whether it's an allergy, an intolerance, or maybe it's just a, a sensitivity, but all of those, if not addressed, can lead to chronic inflammation inflammation in the body. Being sedentary, a sedentary lifestyle. Unfortunately, society has really led us here. Um, most of us have a desk job. We sit at a desk behind a computer. We don't really go out and do physical work anymore. Kids don't go out in the streets and play and ride bicycles or go to a playground anymore. They're sitting with an iPad, iPhone, an Xbox, a PlayStation, something. They're sedentary. We don't get up and move. So a sedentary lifestyle is not how our bodies were built. It's not what our bodies need. Our bodies need movement and that helps flush the toxins out of our body and it helps our systems run optimally. In episode one, I talked about the car and putting, you know, diesel gas or diesel fuel in a gasoline engine. So, what what happens if you don't drive your car for a while? What happens if it's sedentary for a while? Does the battery go dead? Maybe the tires go flat? Again, we need to use that same analogy, use that same methodology with our bodies. It is a locomotive. It wants to go forward. It wants to be propelled forward. We need movement every single day. What about stress or your mood? Again, this will be a, for a future episode, so stay tuned. There's a whole episode on stress. It can do some serious damage to your body if, if you don't take heed to the warning. I fell victim to this. I did not realize I wasn't dealing with my stress. I would, you know, I felt like I had everything handled in my life. I'm a strong person, and I did not realize that that stress was really weighing that heavily on me and was contributing to the symptoms I was having and that chronic inflammation in my body. So stress can be a lot of things. We talked about the circle of life in episode one, if you remember. The circle of life deals with our primary food and the primary food is our work life, our home life, our environments, our finances. You know, it's all the things we don't eat. It's all those things around us and we can be stressed on any level. You know, you can get stressed just stressed driving down the road and maybe it's that other vehicle going down the road next to you that cuts you off and that creates an instant response. Maybe it's your kids and they're not doing exactly what you want them to do. Maybe it's a husband or a wife, a spouse that isn't, you know, doing or you're having an argument. All those things lead to stress. 
Um, environmental triggers. This is another good one. Environmental triggers mean so much. It could just be your toxic environment. Again, that's for a future episode and I'm excited to talk about that one. Environmental triggers can be just heavily chem contaminated areas where we don't realize the things we surround ourselves with in our homes or at work can truly be detrimental to our health. So those are things to consider when we talk about the causes of chronic inflammation and that's a lot. Those firemen again are putting up with a lot and trying to put out fires that are caused by things that maybe they don't necessarily understand. So let's talk about what food causes inflammation. I didn't talk about that just a second ago, but here we here it is. Food truly causes inflammation, and I have to be honest with you. Maybe it causes more inflammation than those other factors. So over time, your dietary and your environmental toxins, as I mentioned, may build up in your body, creating an overactive immune system. Again, the firemen are trying to respond to these fires, these foreign invaders that are in our body wreaking havoc. So food or food ingredients, because remember the definition of food, is truly something that nourishes the body. And most of the things that we put in our mouth and try and digest today are not food. It is a package of chemicals. So food ingredients that promote inflammation in the body. And here are my top five. Sugar, the first and foremost, we all need sugar obviously in our body, our body that's an energy source for our bodies, but it does not need the overabundance for which we put in our system every day. So when you read a label, read a package of food, really be careful and know and understand how they can disguise sugar in that food item. So here's some examples, you know, sucrose, fructose, dextrose, and I'm going to say artificial sweeteners. Even though that's not truly sugar, it's a chemical artificial sweetener such as aspartame, um, you know, Steva, Steva if it's all natural is good, but Splenda, those things our body doesn't understand. It is a foreign invader to our body. So become a label reader. Sugar can really destroy your body and sugar is more addictive than heroin or cocaine. Yes, I said it is more addictive than heroin or cocaine. So really make sure that you're eating foods that aren't just you know full of sugar in any source. The next one is oils corn oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, soy, peanut, and vegetable oil. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I list all those and why would those cause inflammation? Because those are so ready available and that's what is in everything and so why would you need to eliminate those? That's a good question. And here, I'll share this with you. We all know the big controversy over Roundup or Monsanto and, and you know that's in the news and everyone understands what that means. Those crops that generate and create those oils that I just described are so heavily contaminated with chemicals, herbicides, pesticides that it wreaks havoc in our bodies. Again, it's a foreign substance. So most of these oils can be found in mayonnaise and salad dressings, things like that. So be on the lookout for those. A good alternative if you are looking for something here is like a coconut oil. That would be a great alternative and coconut oil is so diverse. Pasteurized dairy. Um, this is a big one that nobody really thinks about. It's the casein, which is the protein found in the dairy that is very difficult for most bodies to digest. So you think about if you have a young child or someone who has a uh, brand new newborn and they're, you know, they're colicky or really have an upset digestive system, this is one of the reasons is that casein is so hard in the body. Refined carbohydrates, high glycemic food, okay? So again, it leads to sugar in our body. So think of breads, rolls, cakes, candies, cookies, crackers, all those things. If it's in a package, chances are it's it's truly got some carbohydrates to it and it will just end up in sh to sugar in our body. Trans fats. They're, they're in more places than we can ever imagine. Fast food, fried products. Again, they're probably fried in the oils I mentioned above because they're cheap and they are readily accessible. Even healthy frozen options, you'll find this. They're healthy, they claim they're healthy, they're in the you know frozen food section and you think to yourself, okay, this will be great. But I guarantee you it's been flash fried or has some kind of breading on it that probably is not good for you. Again, I'll mention 
in processed snacks, foods, cookies, donuts, crackers, margarine, and hydrogenated oils. Those are all trans fat sources and we need to steer clear. Because again, our firefighters really need to respond to fires that are legitimate and not ones that we truly could put out ourselves. So how do we reduce inflammation? This might seem uh, pretty second nature given everything that I just said, but I'll just go over some really key points here. Eliminate all the sources of inflammation from your diet as I just mentioned above. It truly speaks volumes and can make a difference in your day-to-day -day life. Begin eating an anti-inflammatory diet or include these in every meal that you eat. So fresh vegetables, again, I cannot stress enough on the fresh vegetables. They need to be fresh, organic is best, fresh vegetables and fruits. Again, you don't want something that is heavily contaminated with herbicides, pesticides, those types of things. Beans and legumes are good for some people. Again, you might have a sensitivity or an intolerance. You just need to play around with that and find out what your body needs. Healthy fats, again, avocados, walnuts, coconut, those are great sources of fat. Healthy herbs and spices, turmeric, ashwagandha, those types of things. Garlic, introduce those into your cooking good quality proteins and here it's beef and make sure it's organic or chicken and it's you know humanely raised it's organic and, and it's not um, full of a bunch of chemicals um, and I want to just point out salmon make sure it is not farm raised you want wild caught fresh Atlantic salmon not something that has farm raised on the label and water I can't stress how important water is to our bodies we need it to flush the toxins out so water we should be drinking half of our body weight in water. That might sound like a lot to some of you, but it is true. And you can take baby steps here. You don't have to start all at once, but get the water in your body to help your system flush out the toxins that may be lurking in the food that you're eating. Anti-inflammatory practices, some things that you can do to help your body. Exercise, I talked about that, movement. Just go for a walk, get up, maybe do some yoga, those types of things. It doesn't have to be a high intensity workout. You don't have to go to a gym or be a member of a gym. Just get up and move. I mean, every hour, think to yourself, have I been sitting for a long period of time? Maybe I should get up and go for a five minute walk. Just do some slight stretching. Meditation. Again, it needs to calm the mind, that stress factor I talked about. We don't realize sometimes how we allow our day-to-day -day lives to just overcome us and create stress that we aren't dealing with. So meditation is a great way to reduce stress and, and reduce the inflammation in our body. And you can incorporate some anti-inflammatory supplements if you wish. But again, talk to your healthcare provider about that. So I'm at the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed this information. Uh, if you would, you know, give me a thumbs up on this video, hit the like button, hit the share button, share this with your family and friends, maybe somebody who can benefit from this information. It truly has saved my life. And I hope through the, these episodes that I'm gonna present to you here in the future, you can take something from this and apply it to your day-to-day -day life. If you have questions about some of the information I presented today, I certainly, um, you know, I hope you reach out to me. I am more than willing to answer any questions you might have. I'm located at the Endeavor Center in Piketon, Ohio. You can reach me on Facebook at Health and Wellness Bootcamp. Um, you can email me at healthandwellnessbootcamp at gmail.com. I am readily accessible to help you on your health journey. So continue to be a health warrior, and I'll see you next time. Be whole. Welcome back. So as I said, inflammation is a silent killer. What does that mean? Let's, let's dive into that a little more. Inflammation is our body's natural defense against damaged cells, viruses, bacteria, what I call foreign invaders. This is how your body protects you from when you're injured or sick. It involves pain, heat, 
redness, swelling, and potential loss of function to an affected area. You might want to think about a broken bone, maybe you've had surgery or something like that. You will sense those redness, the swelling, and the potential of loss for that, that functional area. Inflammation is a response that helps the body protect against unfriendly bacteria. I mentioned four invaders, right? It supports tissue repair. Inflammation is a necessary response, but it can become so problematic when it goes on for too long or the reaction is too strong. So I strongly encourage you, if you're feeling symptoms in your body, it is communicating to you, work with your primary care physician or your doctor to find out what the root cause is of your inflammation or your ailment. Don't just mask the problem or the symptom. Get to the root cause. So I hope you've enjoyed this information and I'll see you next time. Welcome back. What causes chronic inflammation? You might be asking yourself, what does that mean, chronic inflammation? It is something that goes on for long periods of time and it can happen on the outside of our bodies or the insides of our bodies and you don't even know it. So are you someone who suffers from chronic headaches, maybe joint pain, something of that nature? Here are some things for you to consider that might be causing your chronic inflammation. The standard American diet. We do not eat well. Uh, a lot of our food is heavily um, cooked in sugar or has a lot of sugar content to it, leaky gut, an overactive immune system where our, our system starts attacking our own healthy tissues. What about an underactive immune system where there's no response at all? That can truly um, hurt us as well because there's nothing happening to get rid of the foreign invaders in our bodies. Excess weight, our body doesn't know what to do with that. It really needs to work and be healthy and not carry excess weight that it doesn't know what to do with. Food allergies, that is something you know you're allergic to right now. A food intolerance is something you may, you may know, maybe you get an upset stomach when you eat something. Maybe a food sensitivity, which is something that happens three to six days after you eat that food. So you wouldn't even make the correlation that it's the food that's causing your symptoms. A sedentary lifestyle, we were meant to be mobile. We were not meant to sit behind a TV or computers. Stress and mood and environmental triggers. So take a look at that list. If you're experiencing chronic, chronic inflammation, maybe you can resolve that by eliminating some of these from your day-to-day -day life. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to reduce chronic inflammation in your body. So if you're someone who suffers from headaches, joint pains, things like that, here are some things you can do to eliminate that, that source of inflammation. You want to eliminate all kinds of inflammatory foods from your diet. So this would be like sugars, trans fats, oils, car refined carbohydrates, things that ultimately result into the body having a heavy toxicity load that you're trying to reduce. Begin eating an anti-inflammatory diet. Include some of these things in your meals, like fresh fruits and vegetables, and make sure that they're organic so that they aren't heavily contaminated with herbicides, pesticides, those things. Beans and legumes, some people can tolerate these, some people can't, so you just have to find what works for you. Healthy fats, avocados, walnuts, coconut oil, things like that. Healthy herbs and spices, quality protein, and water. We need to drink twice our body weight in water. Anti-inflammatory practices, exercise, maybe doing some light yoga or stretching, meditation, or you can incorporate some anti-inflammatory supplements in your regime. Just work with your healthcare provider. So hopefully with that information, you can implement some of those and reduce the inflammation and some of your chronic pain in your life.